Good morning, folks. We've got some big stories to hit today, and many flow together quite perfectly. You're watching the last few days of sunspot sequences from SDO here. Let's start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. Southern Hemisphere, just left of center, we're going to see one of the active regions pop as it tries failingly to eject a CME. This is very common in the first two years of the sunspot cycle, as those sunspots gear back up. Of course, we have been seeing some CMEs here and there already. The big story yesterday in the solar wind was a continued calm that extended into a full KP0 day. Our app sent out the Cosmic Ray Health Alert, which is indeed waning this morning due to the rise in KP, but only back to moderate levels so far. Folks, let's start the article news looking at Hubble's latest show of space. There are no fun-named galaxies in the shot, just long alphanumeric designations, but I honestly think they should nickname this one the snail. I see the shell, head and antennae, and it looks like it's crawling up onto a rock. Do you see it too? Let's pair our next two stories together. First, studies are showing the best place for life on Mars could have been way underground. This would complement known microbial abundances underground at Earth, which are thought to eclipse the number and weight of all but the insect kingdom on the surface. And further down that road today is the discovery of earthly microbes in wickedly unfriendly conditions, again way underground. The team is absolutely correct in their extremophile designation of the microbes and that they have implications for the kinds of life likely to be found on other planets, especially beneath the ground on planets where subterranean ice is known to exist today. Earth processes up next. First, we have the presentation of magnetic anomalies before the largest Chile earthquakes of the last decade. This is directly in line with Chapter 7 of our textbook, where electromagnetic precursors snitch on the seismicity beforehand. Folks, we've been waiting for the full release of the cold climate bomb from the Beaufort Gyre, but today, we're looking at a different and short-term change in the flow pattern from 2017. If you recall the record-thick and rough Arctic sea ice from that year, it was indeed caused by a temporary reversal of the gyre. It was not the full release that has the potential to cause major global cooling, just a little blip and a record set for ice in the Arctic. Folks, we are jumping back in time to remind of just one example of the magnetization reversal of an entire object via electric forces. Back then, it was the application of the field, and today, we see it elsewhere with voltage control. While these lab studies are mostly on thin films and tiny substances, it is the only way to simulate large-scale submersion of materials in alternate electric environments. For example, say the Sun and the planets were going to go through the galactic current sheet, the magnetic reversal of our galaxy and electric field shift, you might start to see planets reversing their magnetism, for example. That will nicely dovetail into our top two stories. First, we're going back a quarter million years, and they're now able to pick out the magnetic excursions that happened back then, too. By the way, best guess is we've had 50 to 60 magnetic excursions since the last full cron reversal 800,000 years ago. They also notice that the field sometimes recovers strongly, and sometimes, well, it's a rough age in general. But the same team also decided to focus a separate analysis on more recent events, and their primary discovery is a slightly older new redating of the Blake excursion event. But when looking at their data, we clearly see, yes, that event, sure, it's one of the worst on record, but also evidence of the Vostok Greenland event at the left. The thin vertical line next to it runs through the Toba event, and we also have a couple other events that may be present in the middle, even with their placing a question mark to identify those data features. Time for a preview of the new book, which covers the next ongoing excursion, among other things, and suggests that there were more excursion events, and they've been waiting to be discovered. During the exact time frame, these scientists, and probably your eyes a moment ago, were saying maybe there's more in here. The events between Toba and Blake have not been officially discovered, but if the cycle persisted back before the passage of a red binary system called Shoal Star during the Toba event, then those other excursions should be there, the question mark lines in orange and red. Maybe they were just discovered. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, both our textbook and the pre-order of our newer book are found at otf.cells.com. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.